You do say in your book that alcohol is pretty much always a bad idea. Mm. 100%. And that's because of what we know neuroscience and not because of the liver. The liver, yeah, we need the liver to work. So you don't want to overload the liver with toxins and alcohol is a major toxin. It's the two areas of the brain, that, that the two chemicals in the brain, neurochemicals that are affected most by alcohol are GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, and NMDA. Now, NMDA receptors are found in the thalamus and they're, they're been indicated in stimulating neuropeptide P in fibromyalgia and in ME. So NMDA receptors are very much affected by alcohol. So if you have alcohol, it will affect those receptors and it can really damage the actions of the thalamus. And secondly, the GABA in the basal ganglia, they can be affected because that will dampen pain. They can be affected, the alcohol can affect the GABA, and GABA is very important for lots of things, sleep and relaxation and other things in, involved in the brain's function. Now, the hypothalamus is right next to the thalamus and the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia include a lot of the, it's, it's part, they're all part of the limbic system, so it affects the emotional side. And these parts are, have been indicated when they first discovered the glymphatic system in 2012 in mice. When they stopped it from working, they found the toxins building up in the basal ganglia and the thalamus. That's where the first port of call of the drainage problem. So if you take alcohol and stimulate and, and you affect these chemicals, it's going to affect those areas of the brain that are the main areas of toxins to begin with. So we don't want to add further toxicity to that area. We want to keep that, that area as healthy as possible. So alcohol is an absolute no-no for these patients.